Facebook and welcome, welcome Rushing Wind Radio and welcome Bible Baptist Church. We're going to stand and sing and sing out of the hymn book. We started a little early just to get, uh, uh, well, just felt like need to do it. Amen. Mind the Holy Ghost. Everything go well. Glad that you're here tonight. Uh, glad little Macy's here tonight. Macy got saved just a few days ago and she's glad to be here with Grandma and Grandpa. Amen. And uh, good to see some faces we haven't seen in a while back with us. Let's sing, Tell Me the Story of Jesus, page 201. Let's sing. I was thinking while we're singing that uh, sometimes I feel like I'm an emotional roller coaster. I can be angry, I can be mad, upset, crying, or you know, just emotional basket case before service. But when service gets here, there's something about Jesus. And uh, not to say I was that way today, but I was a little frustrated coming in with some some stuff with AT and T, uh, the phone company. Amen. Just aggravating, but. It is amazing for me. I don't know if it's for y'all. Y'all ready to go? That's That may be the Lord licking his the trumpet of it. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> but it's amazing to me. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Is that you can, when you start talking about Christ, you start testifying no matter where you're at, whether you're in church or a job or in a restaurant, you can be, oh, woe is me about all the problems in the world and politics. And that somebody bring up the name of Jesus, and it just makes everybody. Have you ever been in an open place? I know Junior has, where we've been out there and open, and everybody be talking in our restaurant, and we start praying, and everybody stop. They listen. They pay attention. Because it's the sweetest name that was ever uttered. Amen. Amen, Brother Cody, then the sweetest name I pray. Amen, in Jesus' name. Well, let's, let's pray right now in, in, in the sweetest name I know, Jesus. Father, we do thank you for sweet Jesus, and thank you for that old, old story that's been told so many times that have changed the hearts. Thank you for the newest uh, birth in your family being with us again, a little Macy, and I pray that you guard her heart and her mind and help her to grow in grace. 
Lord, I thank you for uh, bringing folks back to us. Thank you for those joining us on Facebook and Rushing Wind Radio. Thank you for those that are working hard to get the gospel out through media. Now, Lord, help us as we still uh, battle our own fears and battle our own problems that we can rise up above them uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, we'll thank you for what you do tonight. Lord, help us to go to the go to that happy place that you've made for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, just turn. Turn and wave for a second. All right. Today, uh, I got in the mail, or yesterday, I got in the mail uh, a new track that uh, we just have probably 30 or 40 of them, but they're out there in the foyer. It's a new track that a preacher friend, Bill Vaughn, uh, created in, with a couple other guys that printed it. And it says, good advice for living in the Corona-19 world. And uh, when you open it up, it says, some good advice living in the world. And it says, stay, uh, stay uh, in your home except to leave and pick up, you know, all the social distancing and, and uh, all that kind of wash your hands. Uh, then number four, it says this, <laughs> spend less time watching the bad news and more time reading the good news. Amen. Number five, settle your concerns about the grave. If you were getting, if you get Corona 19 by getting your, getting on your knees in prayer and giving your heart to Jesus, then you will be at peace no matter what happens to the rest of your life. Number six, it says study the scriptures on the next page and get some help in those days, in these days of uncertainty. And it gives us Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon while he was, while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, and he, for he will abundantly pardon. Psalms 15, verse 15 says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt, uh, and thou shalt glorify me. Revelation 3, 19 through 21, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and he will sup with me and I and, and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to, uh, grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as also I overcome, I am set down with my Father in his throne. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt, deliver, uh, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Acts 2, 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Boy. And on the back it has, hey, if you, if you need Jesus Christ to pray and ask him to be your Savior. So there's, a, there's about 30 or 40 maybe in the foyer. There's also uh, just maybe four or five of a different corona track that you can hand out uh brother vaughn said that uh when they got these back that um everybody he's handed them to him received them and uh and so the so this is going to be a good opportunity to get people to think it uh, we can utilize the virus by the on the fears as the media and politics has done it but the reality is that uh, we don't know if the media tells you the truth all the time right but we know God's word tells us the truth. And he says, be not afraid. And if you're afraid, you're afraid. And uh, you need to know uh, why not to be afraid. But, so that's uh, for you. And if we need more, we can get them for free. He said he will provide for those. So that is a blessing. Everybody's listening. Bill Vaughn uh, there in Aberdeen. You can, in, in uh, uh, what's the other little town? I can't think of Southern Pine, Carthage, North Carolina. So uh, we do have some prayer requests. And, but I want to do some praises. First, we have some praises tonight. And, uh, and, and if you made the request earlier before pre-service prayer at 6.30, we won't re go, revisit those during this time. But I want to visit some praises. I'm happy. I know there's one. But there's one over here. Miss, uh, yes, go ahead, Candy. To Neil, their daughter got through a cat catheterization. And do pray for her that she's got a vein that collapsed or something. And, or they don't know what's wrong with it. They're going to have to do some vascular surgery in her arm. So... But uh, God is able. We'll continue to pray. Yes, Richard has one. Yes.
Yeah, hey. Right. Amen. How about that? You got to research that number. Yeah, that's 17 minutes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, that's a good power went off, prayed, and God answered prayer. So that is a good phrase. So, uh, yes, uh, the Pat raised her hand. Yay, Shelby. That's right. The baby girl. And she's the oldest girl, too, our oldest and youngest. This girl. Glad that you made it back. And I, uh, Brother Chuck, if for whatever reason you're watching, I made sure that she did get a copy of your uh, marriage thing. And I gave one to Hunter, too, because you never know. They're, they're you know, at that age. So. Uh, you are, but you got the ring on your hand. Shelby says she hadn't thrown it back at him yet. That's good. That means you're made for each other. All right, anybody else have a praise? Praises? Yes, Annabelle. You made the last 100 on the what quiz? Busy board? Busy B board. So that means you've got one 100, 100 hundreds. And that means what? You got to have a party. Yay! I think, did you bribe one of the teachers? Is that what you did? You gave them some money. Is that what happened? No, they get a surprise party at some in some venture. Maybe we'll do it at, you know, like June 12th. It would be okay? What? They're out of school, but then. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations for making the, the, the last 100. I wonder who made the most 100. Do you all know? But, oh, without even hesitation. And Jason, Jason did good too, so that's that's great. She did? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> you better watch your back tomorrow, amen. Yay! Was that in coloring? Chris, was that in coloring? <laughs> he colored within the lines? No, he did good. All right, <laughs> that's a prayer. <laughs> Anybody else have a, a praise? praise? Yeah, I know there's a big praise here. So uh, you, you need a microphone? No, you go ahead. Yay! Uh, she was a darn to tell Miss Kathy. <clears throat> now watch the rapture take place tonight. Amen? That'd be all right. That'd be all right. I'll call, I'm going to have to call Brother Mike Austin and say, hey, hey, hey. Uh, that's good. That's the other church pastor there. Uh, well, I'm, I'm happy. She let us know beforehand. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm excited for you. And I know everybody else is too. So, amen. Uh, Miss, uh, welcome back, Miss Normie and Billy and everybody. Amen. They, the Sattlers got back safely. Uh, anybody else have a praise? Uh, you're here tonight. Everybody's well. Uh, Yes, Keely. Amen. Amen. We're going to have 300 next year. I'm just kidding. I'll be praying for your new pastor, amen. <laughs> uh, so that's good. Yeah, there are people inquiring, and I think they, they know why. I, w I got to thinking about public schools. They did go to uh, doing online stuff, I believe. But uh, and I got to thinking they graduate a lot. Of, you know, the eight, 2020 graduates they graduated, but they had to probably graduate them doing less work they would have done if they were present. You know that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I don't know. I think about my high school education. My high school prepared me for college to make me realize I didn't get prepared in high school. Does that does that does that make sense? So my high school education was to prepare you so when you get to college, you realize in college that you weren't prepared. Yeah. And you said, dear Jesus, I have to pass this. <laughs> Anybody else have a praise? How many of y'all just you dread learning anything? Don't say it. Don't quick because that's the truth. You know, there's, you know we really, we, as we get older, we, we resist learning. Uh, anybody else praise? Prayer requests now? That's some prayer requests. I do want to thank uh, thank the Lord for always providing through these times of uh, uh, 
uncertainties, not only for health for folks, because we've had people sick with different things, not the virus, but, uh, but also for financial, uh, for uh, sanity. Um, uh, sometimes I, I still have my moments of, san of lack of sanity. Uh, amen. And, uh, and, and some of y'all know, some of your schedules hadn't changed, and I understand that, that and so you're not going to sense it. But when things change, and I, I've said this before, but when you're, when you're limited at, uh, at preparing, planning, when you, when you're, because that's what, when you're at any job, you're having, you work you, in your mind, you're thinking about your day and what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And then when you're, when that's all kind of thrown down on the ground, you're just like, okay, I don't need to do that. It'll wait. I don't need to do that. It'll wait. There's no, there's no sense of urgency. But there, because the sense of urgency, at least for a pastor, is you want to help people spiritually and you want to be a friend to them and kind and, and things. And, and you only talk to so, so much to people before they, they start screening your calls. There's people that screen my texts. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. I know when they read them, they have Apple phones. Say amen. And they say, I didn't get them. They're like, well, yeah, somebody, your dog pushed the, pushed the button. Amen. Something. And that Paul works on the <laughs> Anyway, anybody else have a, a prayer request or a, uh, uh, yes, Miss Nancy. Diana's sister-in-law having surgery. Let's pray for safety for her recovery. Uh, anybody else? Mom's having shoulder surgery in June. Uh, and they're going to, they said she has to quarantine herself for two weeks, which is, yeah, that's crazy. Well, yes, sir. Eddie, Brian, and Joshua, and Tanil. Anyone else? Yes, Canada. Pray for Miss Jennifer's car. And then I saw him over here. Kitty. Yeah, so, someone told us that he had he, he started talking. Amen. Yeah, she'll be separated from. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they separated him if because they're really funny. I mean, the hospital, uh, if you're having major surgery, you can't, a loved one can't even, they, they drop them off and you got to leave. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I think we ought to just bar, you know, just go in. And, what do they call that thing? Do a, and start singing in the, in the lobby or something? What do they call that? And we just bust out some flash mob. Yeah, flash mob the hospitals. Faith is the victory. No, wait a second. Some people say singing makes your spit go out further. So how about, how about preaching, man? First front row. Anybody else a praise? Yes, Cody. Yes, we pray for him too, Frank. He's back. Have you talked to him anymore since? Yeah. yeah. Probably a maybe a muscle. Hopefully it's not a herniated disc. Uh, anybody else? Yes, Ms. Jane. Wow. Sounds like mom. I and mean, she had to viral bronchitis. She was in several hospitals and they're all scratching their head. Let's pray for uh, Aunt Lydia. Anybody else? Yes, Ms. Moore. Unspoken. Anybody else with unspoken requests? Uh, uh, across the land, you have lost loved ones you love to see get saved. Call them out when we pray right here. And uh, All of y'all ready for God to educate you? You ready for education? We are having an enrollment right now in prayer. We're going to enroll you in the, in the life of education. 
basic instructions before leaving the earth. So Leslie's going to play a little bit while we, uh, uh, while we pray. And uh, you pray with us too online and, and on the radio if you would please. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'll stay at the microphone. Father, thank you for our people pray, praying tonight and, and praising you tonight. And Lord, I do for, first and foremost ask you that you would cleanse us. Uh, Lord, would you uh, wash us. Help us to be presentable in thy sight. Lord, uh, may, may we decrease, God, you increase. Uh, sweet Jesus, these requests have been made from the hearts of your people, the needs of family and friends. And we do ask that uh, we would hear uh, results that would benefit the gospel, benefit your kingdom. Lord, we certainly want folks to allow these circumstances to, to work, to push them towards you be saved if they're not saved. And Lord, we do pray for uh, these requests uh, for Nancy's uh, friend with the surgery, Lord, for, for Eddie and, and Brian and Josh and Tennille. Pray for Miss Jennifer and the car. Pray, God, that you speak to her heart and encourage her. Lord, we pray for Aunt Lydia's need for Les, who's looking for that rehab, help him, and for Cody's wife, Sharon, and the biopsy she's having for our unspoken request, Lord, the lost loved ones we have in our church and our families, for our nation, our president, Lord, we do pray for Frank, too, and pray for those that aren't here for whatever reasons, that we ask God to meet those needs, too, and comfort our people grow us in a way that will open our eyes first so we can walk by faith in you by spiritual sight tonight and not fleshly sight. Help us to do the things that we need to do that may not seem normal in the eyes of some but Lord help us to, to do what's normal in your, your sight what would please you first and foremost would you help our missionaries help our church those that uh, are still struggling with fears and help them uh, have overcoming faith through that. Lord God, protect us, put a hedge around us. May we grow in grace tonight. Fill me with your spirit, I pray. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We will take up an offering tonight in the plates. So uh, if you have an offering, but we're going to sing before we do that. Uh, joy unspeakable. Let's do first, second, last. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. We'll all stand here and we'll sing together. churches that have always taken up offerings at the back of the church. Uh, they use a scripture in the Old Testament that talks about the wooden box and they set aside for offerings and they use that as a, a thing. They're the same people that says if you, you can't have anything but a wooden pulpit because in the Bible they use wooden pulpits. Well, you know, back to, what, about 25, 30 years ago, the acrylic pulpit started getting popular. 
there's a big uproar about that, being liberal. I thought, man, I wouldn't have acrylic pulpit because, you man, you know why? Sometimes you forget to zip something, amen? And that's embarrassing, amen? Uh, but, uh, no, you know, just because a lot of the furniture in the church is not biblical, it's just practical. It's not, it's not wrong or right. Uh, I know one time we didn't have a communion table. Why we put that up? We'd have more chairs and things. And some people would have a fit about that. But uh, that's just uh, culture and so forth. But we're going to keep the cross. Amen? Amen. And we'll keep the book. And we're going to keep the opportunity to give an offering. Give yourself, of course, as a token to what God's done for you. If anything, just today. How God's watered your gardens or watered somebody else's garden that's going to give you tomatoes this year. Say amen. And water those cucumbers. They like them, right, Mom? They like they like water too. Uh, and so we, we just thank thank the Lord for uh, being able to give back to Him, even just praise. So if you don't have nothing monetarily to give, they just praise Him while the, while the music's playing. Just praise Him and pray and and give Him some glory. All right. Uh, let's pray together, Brother Cody. Would you lead us? Yes. Lord. Help us, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. You may be seated. birthday boy. He's in the foyer, I believe. Uh, hey, Mike, stick your head in here. Your brother told on you. You're not a year younger, brother. You're a year older. So happy birthday to you. Yeah, and there's another one here. Melvin? Not yet. We'll call you at midnight. <laughs> hey, I believe you'll make it. Amen. Hey, you're going to live no matter what. If you drop dead right now, you're going to be in heaven. Amen. I remember that day. I know you do too. I remember that day. Uh, not too long ago. Happy birthday. She's telling me to sing it. <laughs> Happy birthday.
Thank you, Brother Gary. We had a little delayed in the class there. That's good. Uh, take your Bibles, turn to Proverbs chapter number three. Uh, we need to hurry, 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 hurry. Uh, we live in a time of ease and comfort. The padded pews, the air conditioning takes all the humidity out. Girls, your hair is not all frizzy because of the wet weather outside. Uh, think about it the poorest person that you know really isn't poor. They have all their needs met and an iPhone. Typically, um, they they complain because they don't have all their wants. They they want to live uh, like very wealthy people, but they don't want to do the work. Um, our ancestors, I believe, we can say this honestly. Our ancestors were such a godly group of people that their their walk with the Lord instilled in our country and our in the country's philosophy within our culture an attitude of making sure that people's needs were met. Does that, does that make sense? Our forefathers uh, lived such a godly life that they took biblical principles that were supposed to uh, help the poor, give the poor and things, and they instilled that in our country. Uh, although those needs were supposed to be sanctioned through the local church, it was supposed to happen. Welfare mentality was never supposed to be a government's job. It was supposed to be the church's job. 
uh, medical assistance, assistance in any way, food, shelter, clothing, was something that the church would do. You know why that would, that's such an important thing? Is because uh, when you come to the church, we give you a hand up, not just a hand out. We just don't cut you a check. We talk to you about what can change your life, make your ends meet, where you can walk in the desert and find water running out of rock and find a bird flying at your feet and, and, and Krispy Kreme dropping from the skies. I mean, I'm telling you, God knows how to take care of those that know how to do what God wants them to do. Our government has taken over the majority of benevolence in our country. And, and, and I, you know, it's just a fact of life. The, the government's helped us birth our, our young as we haven't had the, uh, much money uh, through the years or or health insurance and things, but so I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying the mentality today uh, is that we are at ease and at com we're comfortable. We think we got to get more comfortable, and it really proved uh, it proved that I'm not again. I'm not fussing. It's just I'm I'm explaining the obvious uh, when we're in the cars. Uh, we can't hear because the engine. You can't. It's, it's hot. You got to turn the engine on. Or can't see when we're outside. The bugs are terrible. The, it's hot. It's sunny. I'm sweating. The, it's just we're comfortable, and that's just life, right? Again, I'm not trying to pick on any particular person because I will, I'm will. i the one that said all that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, there are many reasons why it's happened, and not as many people today, one of the reasons is not as many people today love God, not as many people attend church. Remember years ago, there used to be blue laws, even in our lifetime, where everything was shut down on Sundays, even gas stations. But you think about the years before we can only watch programs that reenact that where on Sunday you were a heathen if you weren't up to church. The crops could wait. Even, you know, God gave you a little pass if the ox fell in the ditch, but I believe back then just say, let them sit there and be all right until after church. You know, that, uh, again, uh, less people today love God, less people attend church. Uh, uh, there's less giving and there's less compassion, so there's less ability for the local church to help people. It's hard to give people, it's hard to be Bank of America to everybody with their hands out, which uh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee, is what uh, they told the, the lame man at the temple gate. And since Jesus established the world, he is wanting to guide us, he is wanting to correct us, and he is wanting to reward us. Isn't that an awesome thing? So our life, Christian life isn't always about just uh, do it my way and I'm going to beat your tail if you don't. But it's, all, it's this, it says, please follow me. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Follow my ways. If you get off course, I will direct you. I will correct you. And guess what? In, in very short manner, you're going to be rewarded. Sometimes those rewards are on this side of eternity and sometimes they're on the other side. The only issue is because of this mentality of being at ease and comfort, most just want the reward without correction or guidance. Think about the kids. Clean up your room. And they go throw two or three things in the closet under the bed. They come downstairs, I want my ice cream or pizza or I want my game or something. You walk go upstairs, look at the room. What'd you clean up? Well, I put that piece of clothing in there, I put that in, and then you had to step over all the clothes to get up to it. They want the reward. They don't want to get the tail tore up. Of course, you, you say that in some churches. Our church is used to so most of y'all folks, you know what tail tearing up, getting a whipping, right? Get switched, right? We understand that, agree with it. Say, hallelujah, wish I did it more. Wish I just did it for fun. Yeah. <laughs> but most don't want to be corrected. They don't want any guidance. It used to be when kids got to be teenagers that you had to deal with the know-it-all. But now when they're eight, nine years old, they know it all. And they know how to use your phone better than you do. They can lock you out. Amen? Again, the government has taken the place of the local church and leadership. Few can discern the presence of the Holy Ghost. Few can discern the presence of the Holy Ghost. Only if there's an up-tempo song, some will say, the Holy Ghost is in here. Because I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, that's good. I like it. Oh, woo, woo. And that's, Typically not the Holy Ghost, that's your flesh. Fleshly emotion has replaced spirit-filled conviction. And this is an important part of the message. Listen, boys and girls, everybody look up here. Spirit-filled conviction and contrition. Contrition. I know it's a big word, but it, it means remorse. It means repentance. 
Now, this all has a, a theme. I'm, we're going to get to our happy place. I'm preaching on a happy place. Why is it that we can't get to that happy place? Well, we've got to be put there by God. It's a, it's a happy place that only God can reward us with. It's only a place that God can take us to. Now, God's happy place isn't like our fleshly happy place. Our fleshly happy place is this, and we all have those. It's shopping, hunting, doing your recreation, eating that big bowl of ice cream, you know, sleeping, whatever you like to do to get away. Cal gone, take me away. We can get to our happy place, and a lot of times that's what we're doing now. Uh, we're not seeking after God's happy place because there's a process in order to get there. Uh, we, we go ahead and make our own. We invent our own that has flesh involved. And, and so then we inadvertently tell our kids and we're telling our country, we're telling our churches that you just need to be happy. And people say, How, when am I happiest? Uh, when I'm doing something of the flesh. There, there's not many people that are happy in church anymore. I, I've, especially this last couple services I preach and I preach in such a way and I watch people and so you might want to get you a pocket mirror and look at your face because sometimes I think some of y'all are chewing on some persimmons, man. I'm telling you, you, you can kill me with your eyes or your, or your or lack of connection. I can understand teenagers that they have their cell phone in front of them and you let them and they're playing uh, Warcraft or something and they could care less in the world because uh, we're not making a mind and so forth. They're playing and playing with kids in the pew. Uh, but we as believers ought to be aware of that, hey, the preacher's trying to help us, trying to get us to that happy place. And some are saying, as long as you get me home, I'll get to a happy place. It's called Jack Daniels. It's called the pill bottle. It's called the television. It's called pepperoni pizza. Popcorn, right, Keely? Keely's. She has an addiction. She's going to confess that later. And I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dealer. I started making homemade popcorn. Some of you people don't even know how to do that. I thought you'd just take it out of the bag and put it in the microwave. Two, ten, two minutes and it's... Have you noticed those bags got real small over the years? This little side... Man, you just pop them things, be like that big, you go... And you can eat, eat, now they're like... And three or four handfuls is gone. But I started making homemade popcorn. You get a big, big pot, little oil, and whole butter, real butter, salt, and you... And I'm talking about in 45 seconds... And then this is how you do it to make it good. A little side note for everybody. Then you put garlic powder and Parmesan cheese. So Keely's addicted. I gave her her first bowls free. <laughs> I'm going to start charging here in a minute. But we create our own happy places. And so when we come to the place of church where it's important, and God says there's a happy place for you, and we, what do we got to do to get to it? Oh, man, we just don't like it. And so we, we, we rebel against what God has for us. Happiness, let, let me re, restate what I just said. Few can discern the presence of the Holy Spirit only if there's an up-tempo song. Fleshly emotion has him replaced spirit-filled conviction and contrition. Those two words are important. Happiness isn't found in freedom of the flesh. We should be under conviction. So, so happiness isn't found in, I can do what I can do now and not get caught. I can, I can live in the flesh and it's okay. That Oh, I'm happy when I'm able to do what I want to do. But it should be found in conviction. It isn't found in, the, and this is important, in the forgiveness of sins. That sounds weird. That sounds like, you mean happiness isn't found in the forgiveness of sins? No contrition should be. Remorse, repentance. So let me explain. So if... If we think happiness is found in forgiveness of sins, then we're happy to sin to get forgiveness. Or in our sin, we say, it's okay. God knows I'm weak. God knows my being. He knows my statue. He knows my, uh, my upside and downside. And He knows, and I'm so happy He's forgiven me. That's the wrong kind of happiness. It should be in con contrition. Happiness is found in conviction. Conviction that I'm doing wrong and and thank God that God's convicting me. We're getting to Proverbs 3 in just a minute. But then contrition, I should be remorseful that I did it. There's things that we all have, that besetting sins, that we fall back into it over and over. I mean, that ice cream I keep mentioning, I can't have it. 
By the way, can I brag a little bit about about a diet? I went, I started started the, the you know the high protein stuff a couple months back, and no more takers. This popcorn is about the biggest thing, but my A1C was what was it? It was, it was ten point something. Go ahead, and go, ooh, that's bad. That's the doctors tell you bad. So now it's six point eight. But all of my other levels are bad. So my triglycerides. <laughs> But no, they're not that bad. But but uh, uh, it, it, you know, you, you ch exchange one thing from. I don't have that had anything to do with what I'm talking about. But I just want to brag and say thank the Lord that I do feel better. That I'm not as sweet as I used to be. But uh, uh, conviction and contrition. So God has made us a happy place. Let's find out where it's at. And the only way you can get there is by responding. This is important. Responding in a regnant terminology, to God's with you. It's the only way you can get there. In Proverbs chapter number 3, just remain seated, it says, verse 11, he's talking to believers here. Now again, there's a lot of people in church that, that they believe, but they haven't been saved. And so they're not a child of God. They're still their father is the, de the devil, and he's the liar of all lies, and he, he's fooled a, a, a lot of people. A few there be that enter in there at the, 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 walk, the, the walk with God and, and the, the straight gate and all that. Few there be entering that there at. But here, Solomon's saying, my son, he's talking to those that are, are saved. He says, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding, for, uh, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all, things, and all the things that thou canst desire are not compared to her. Length of days are in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and... All her paths are pieces. Talking about wisdom, by the way. She is a tree of life to them that lay upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth; by understanding he hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge are uh, knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down. The dew, my son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion; so shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck, then, sh thou, then shalt thou walk in the way, thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. Let's pray. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, I pray. Preach. You, Lord, you get the glory. Help us to be get in that happy place. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we have several songs, uh, Happy and Mine, Jesus is mine for... And then, oh, happy day. Paul said, I think myself happy. He had to think himself. There is something connected to happiness, and it's the chast chastisement of God. So our happy place is through the door of God's discipline. That's point number one. Through the door of God's discipline. That doesn't make any sense. You wonder why there's a lot of miserable kids. I'm talking about our kids, a lot of kids in the world miserable, because they lack discipline. And I'm not just talking about getting their tail tore up. There's just no discipline. They can sleep in as long as they want to sleep. They can eat what they want to eat. There's no order. There's no routines. There's, no, there's absolutely no discipline. They're just wild. The dog knows when to go to the door to go out, but the kids don't even know how to put new toilet paper on the roll. Hello? You and I both know there's, there's a conflict in our lives, and our conflict is that, yeah, we know discipline is better. Being disciplined, you get things done. Being disciplined, you know, at the end of the day, you can accomplish something. But then on the flip side is that I don't want to be disciplined. I want what I want. But here with God, and when you're dealing with your personal own one a day and in your, in your room or your house, I, well, you really can't separate it. We have to be under God's discipline if we're going to even get through the doorway to happy life. Proverbs 3.11 says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delighteth. Now understand this, that, and we're going to read more in Hebrews, that children of God, we get our tail tore up. There is supposed to be chastening. There's supposed to be discipline in the child of God's life. You don't see a lot of that today. Most can get the uh, the Lord's get to the Lord's happy place 
uh, they can't get there because uh, they're not a part of the bride of Christ. Uh, they have to create their own fleshly happiness. And that's the reason why they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be disciplined. That's why you can come to church, and I've had this happen over the years. People, uh, Certain people over the years, and they're no longer here, they'll come up and they'll, I just feel like a, I come to church, I'm always being beat up, and there's just no positivity. And just I just want to, and basically what they're saying is, I can't get to, I can't feel good in my sin while I'm at your church. Because you make my happy place miserable. You, you tell me my happy place is the wrong thing. And God says, well, I've got a happy place for you. But you think it's, what, because it's all temp, what you're doing is temporal, and it's, and it's really instantaneous. So you think about most stuff that makes us happy is under five minutes. Unless you're a slow eater. How I many of y'all get that piece of pie, and you're like, man, this is hot. <laughs> and then before you know it, four or five minutes of is gone. Think of this, God's discipline. Few will try God's repentance. There, there is just more effort to cover up their sin. This is what people do in church. At Bible Baptist Church, people cover up their sin. They put more effort covering up their sin to hide it from the church. And one of the first signs of people resisting God's discipline, and we're trying to get to our happy place. We're trying to get there real quick tonight. Uh, the reason why uh, we don't want to, get, or we don't get to God's happy place, is because of uh, not wanting God's discipline. And, and and you can tell people don't want God's discipline when they stop communication, lines of communication. Remember, I said there's people that avoid my texts. People don't call back. People don't show up to service. There's some people right now that were here Sunday. They aren't here now. So it's not about the virus. Where could it, could they be at their happy place? Could it be it's more happy at home watching it via internet when you know you ought to load up and come? Hello? You feel a little chastening? I hope so, because if you don't feel chastening of the Lord, you're a bastard. You're illegitimate. I don't discipline your kids. You don't discipline mine. But I can tell you, if you're one of God's, He's going to wire your hind out out. If you try it, the signs, and let me iterate this again, the first signs of rebelling against God's discipline and not wanting God's discipline is the communication lines drop. No, you're, 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 you can't be found by the FBI. The, and the reason why, the less the church folks know about me, the less they will find out about my sin, the less I will feel judged, the more I can stay in my happy place. It's my happy place. At least of my happy place. The only issue is it's corrupt thinking. It, it, the only issue is that God knows us all. Hello, newsflash. You may cover it up for me. I may be oblivious to your fleshly, sinful, happy places, but you can't hide from the Lord. You can try to hide it from the people, and you may do it. To, you may try to hide it from those that love you, and you may accomplish it, but you'll never hide it from God, and you'll never enter His happy place as long as you're content with your happy place. And your happy place is always away from the people of God. Can't wait church is over. I'm going to go to this. Can't wait church is over. I'm going to go to there. Man, why do we have to have revival that week? That's my happy place. I had to go to church again, read my Bible again. God's discipline or God's correction takes us to a happy place that He has for us. But we have to be willing to respond to it. Now turn over to Hebrews 12, chapter, chapter 12. I got a lot of preaching in a little bit of time. Hebrews chapter 12. And ain't nothing worse than this. Why are you, why are you putting this? There's nothing worse than this. And somebody will give you something or tell you to watch something, and they say, that'll make you happy. You know, oh, that'll make you happy. Oh, you got to watch that. It's so funny. You ever had people do that? They'll say, look at this. Look at that. And they're just, ah! you know, like, that's stupid. But then you fake it a little bit and you go, oh. <laughs> and then you go to your family and you go, man, you spend a waste of my time. They say, this would be funny and all this. And then you have people, they don't do this to me, but I've heard other people talk, complain about it. They say, they'll have people send them stuff all the time. Hey, read this. Read this. It's, read this. Read that. By the way, I, that was, I read that. Was, uh, she, she sent me something today. It was good. <laughs> I do what. But, uh, uh, you know, people send there say, oh, it's funny. And it's funny to them. It makes them happy. But don't, isn't that a terrible feeling? But the reason why I said all that is because our little ones are watching us. And they're watching us go to our little happy places that make us happy that's not of God. And they start creating their happy places. 
guess what? You don't have to love anyone. Hebrews chapter 12 really speaks, speaks about it. It says, i got quite a bit of a few verses here. It says, and, and, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Verse 5. My son, look, look at this, this, is a repetition of Proverbs 3. Forget not, uh, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son who, whom he hath received. He receiveth, uh, if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son in whom the father chasteneth not? But so that's a statement saying he, he whips us all. He chasteneth us all. Uh, because there ain't nobody perfect, right? I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not some spiritually elevated for anybody else. I got sin too. And the moment you think you got sin, that's the sin right there that you didn't even realize you had. So, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are what? Partakers. Then ye are what? Bastards. In a, we can't use that word today. Well, the kids can't help it. Well, we understand. We're not calling. We understand, but they're a product of an illegitimate relationship. That's why parents ought to be more careful than getting into an illegitimate relationship and have bastard kids. That used to be something that would want to prevent that. And not sons. So here, there's a lot of people that come in claim God as their father. I don't know how that would make you feel. I'd feel real bad if some woman, some woman or boy come in that's 20 years old and said, Hey, Daddy! Who are you? Well, you, you and my mama is the girl you dated, you know, da 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 or whatever. It'd be a, still be a bastard. Illegitimate. Not, not, not mine. Just because you say it don't make it so. Hello? A lot of people in churches say, God, you're my father. And God's saying, who are you? I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. Furthermore, we have, verse 9, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather in, be, uh, be in subjection to the uh, Father of Spirits and live? By the way, that's changed today because daddies don't wear out their kids' butts anymore. It says they reverence and they're in subjection. The kids are in subjection. It's because most families, they, they do not discipline at all. So when, now the younger generation growing up uh, in church, they read these things. They say, oh, what does this mean? Dad, Dad, don't say it's Dad taking away my game station. You know, the kids only get grounded. I'm going to cut your salary down to $100 a week. Allowance. My kids' allowance is you get to eat and sleep. Say amen. <laughs> they get a lot of that. Amen. Verse 10, For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our own profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. So God's getting us to a place of holiness, which is... By the way, in the same place as happiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and, and the feeble knees. And he's talking about praising the Lord and getting on your knees and pray, right? And make straight uh, paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Uh, be, uh, but let... It rather be healed. Follow peace with all men in, lo in holiness. Without no man shall see the Lord looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any bitter root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be fornicators or profane persons, or, uh, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing. He was rejected. Or he found no place of repentance. There you go, repentance. Though he sought it carefully with tears. So we have this issue. Why can't we get to the happy place? Because we've got to, we've got to submit to God's discipline. God's chastening. God's whipping more. And it may be, when does God whip you? It may be during preaching. You may be sitting there going, how does he know? I don't have to know. I don't have to know anything about you. If I just preach what God tells me to preach, it may be square right up on your hind end and God's saying, I love you. That's why I'm wearing your tail out because I want to correct you. I want to try to guide you. I want you to be convicted and I want you to have contrition. So you can get to the happy place. Don't you want to go to the happy place? Some of y'all go, please, please. 
These verses detail the Lord's desires for us to reach that happy place. Let me just give them to you in a bullet list. This is some of the things you've got to do as far as discipline. It says, don't despise it. Don't faint from it. You need to endure it, for we are His sons. Because, you know, we endure it. Afterwards, He says it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. He, he tells us that uh, to lift your hands up, to bow your knees, uh, make straight the paths for your feet. Uh, follow, but you know what that kind of alludes to in my mind? It means that uh, you get the obstacles out of your life. Because that's what everybody says. Well, I would come back, but, you know, I got to... I would, I would go to that Bible study. But, well, you know, I, I've created obstacles in my way from my happy place. And then when you're not in God's happy place, you've got to find happy somewhere. Follow peace with all men and holiness, looking diligently for God's grace. Watch for the root of bitterness that may spring up. Do not be a fornicator. That's sexual activity. Listen up, every boys, girls, man and woman, or profane person. Hanging around a bunch of wicked, ungodly people on television. You're not supposed to do those things. You want to go to the happy place. Or are you satisfied with your happy place? Your happy place costs you far more than you want to pay. It keeps you longer than you want to stay. Right? It takes you further than you want to go. Then he says, don't be like a profane person like Esau. You know what Esau did? In order to get his happy place, he sold his birth. He was hungry. I'm hungry. Oh, who cares about a birthright? Here, you can have it. <laughs> Remember, there are always two choices when responding to God's discipline. There's nobody, none of us likes God's discipline. I don't, if you like it, then you're weird. But we don't need to respond by rebelling against it. Often I've noticed, in, and even within myself, if I'm not careful, careful, we'll resist God's discipline. And when we resist it, this is a byproduct of resisting is bitterness. And then, notice in the order of these, this verse, there's bitterness. Uh, you see the bitterness? Watch. The, and then it says, do not be a fornicator or profane. So when you're bitter, you want something to pleasure your body. Hello? Some of y'all go, I don't know what that is. Look, well, you're too old, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, it may be food, but it's sexuality. That's why kids run to it. Young people run to it. It's everywhere. Profane is that you'd rather have you'd rather have food, you'd rather have fleshly desire than the position that God's placed you in. And I tell you, if we resist God's discipline. God's trying to train us. God's trying to get us to our happy place. We become a very hard and bitter person. Let me give you some Bible for that. If you don't agree with me, it's Proverbs twenty one nine. It says, "He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy." In Jeremiah 17, 23, it explains it perfectly. But they obeyed not, neither inclined to the ear, uh, but made their neck stiff that, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. But the happy place is available for all those that respond correctly to God's discipline. God's not trying to draw blood. He's trying to apply the blood. Though God's discipline is correction, reproving, and conviction, and, and con contrition we should have, uh, isn't always fun to be participants of. Uh, we come to that happy place. We come to that doorway when we receive God's discipline. And, and the, only, the only two points tonight is that ha what, else, what else guarantees the happy place? You've got to accept the God's discipline and then you've got to want, want to be wise. Remember I said earlier, I said how many of y'all like to learn new things? I didn't want you to raise your hand. Because you're in trouble. If you've already settled that you know it all, and that you know all you want to know, then you're not going to get to the happy place that God has for you. Because in Proverbs, as well as other places, when you find that He talks about disciplining, He follows it immediately with wisdom. He follows it here with wisdom. You would think that we all would want to be wiser, right? Uh, we, we do only if, it's, if it... Uh, uh, it goes our ways, if we can make us more money, or if it creates more comfort, become wiser. But uh, see, there is a price becoming wiser for the Lord. That's why few really desire it. If, 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 if there were many that desired it, we would have more people here for Sunday school than we do church. If, if many desired it, we, we would have to uh, buy a new, build a new building for FBI. If we want to be wiser when it comes to 
uh, the things of God, then the house of God would be filled. But most people will spend their years being wise or going to secular colleges, sending our Christian kids to secular schools, and they get wise, but they get wise of the flesh. They learn to build happy places that, boy, if we just had some more money an hour and if I had that extra foot on the boat and I actually had that extra shotgun and I had that extra wardrobe closet and a brand new car and I had all these things, boy, that's your happy place. When you know as well as I do every single person in here, once you have it for one or two drives or one or two wears, it's like, Leslie bought me a pullover from Walmart. It's one of those, that, that material that's kind of just silky. It's just, it, I like it. It feels good. But I could tell it's a one time. Well, I got popcorn grease on it, right? Popcorn grease. So I sprayed the fat, whatever it is on it, and I took it off, and Leslie washed it, and I saw it hanging up. Well, I can tell you, it don't look like it did when it was wrapped the package. You know how those are? See, isn't that beautiful? You wash it, and it's gone. It, that's it. Let somebody a lot smaller than me wear it. Amen. It ain't not. I don't know where I was going with that. Amen. So, we are told in James chapter 1 and verse 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That giveth all men liberally, and braideth not, and it shall be given. We think we ought to just be able to ask God, and God, you say, God, and I've done this. I'm guilty of it. I've got it in my prayer notes. I can prove it in writing that I've asked God for wisdom. God, I want your wisdom. We think you said in your word, James 1 5, if any man lack, I lack God. And I'm thinking that's all I know is to confess I lack wisdom. Let me just ask you, God, and you're supposed to give it to me. But I didn't read the rest of the verses. Verse 6, it says, when you ask, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavers. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven in with the wind and tossed. For let nothing, I mean, for, for let not that man think of, that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know how I can sum that up? If you lack wisdom, you can ask God, but you better make sure you don't have sin in your life because the double-minded man is you think you're standing on Jesus and you'll stand in your sin and God's going to make you wise in your sin. Double-minded man is unstable on his way. Got one foot in church, one foot out. Got one church on your career, another, another on God's call. And you think God's going to make you wise in that? Make you smart? Wisdom comes with being, with our being adjusted to God's ways, to God's truth, His discipline. I remember when I got saved. Y'all remember too. When you got saved, you started going to church, you started reading your Bible, hopefully you start dressing better, you start giving a little more, you start witnessing, you adjust to God's ways. You don't all of a sudden just say, well, Lord, I've got this little space for you. I'm going to shove what I can in this space, and as long, if that's all you get. Because I still have my career. We are to ask by faith. We're supposed to humbly ask by faith. With singleness of mind, meaning that I just want wisdom to honor you, Lord. I want wisdom because I know if I, if, if I respond correctly to your chastening, to your discipline, if I respond to it, and I, and I want to be wise in the things that you offer, I've arrived in my happy place. How many places could you go and you only had two turns? That's it. It's two. God, I want to respond. I'm going to turn from my ways to your ways. And then my happy place, there's just one more. It's just a step through. I want wisdom so I can be wise in the Lord. Not so I can make money to take me out of church. Hello? You watch me, my kids, they didn't, I haven't got, I had, I've had the privilege, I should say. And I said, thank you, the church of that. Privilege let Keely come and work, and Abby will do some work here. And hopefully, Shepherd, if he don't do nothing in the school, he can mow the grass. Amen. Have to teach him though, right? We'll get all the teenagers out there. They'll say, what's that thing? Is that what dad rides? Oh, yeah. To get, in, to get this way, dealing with wisdom, and to get in the happy place, we must have the correcting hand of God in our life. We must have the, the hand of God in our life. Listen to me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wrap up here. We must have that in our life. Back to Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13. Look what it says. Happy is the man that findeth what? Wisdom. 
and the man that getteth understanding. So here's the important word in that. It's not wisdom. It says happy. It's not happy, but it's find it. So that, that in the English, it, it kind of alludes that there's, there's effort that, that has to be on our part. It's not just sit, laying back in our recliner, lazy boy, and say, God, I lack wisdom. Give it to me. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you Jesus. Hallelujah, God. I'm wiser than everybody. No. You know where you find it? Through the chasing hand of God. You remember, and you might be teaching your kids now, and the kids go, you ask them to do something, and they're like, what in the world are they doing? And you think in your mind, they're idiots. Then you think, well, I used to do that too. So they're not so bad. But you see people do stuff, and they just don't know. And then you have to, what? Correct them. You have to tell them, no, you don't do it. No, do it like this. Do it like this. And then guess what? They become what? Wiser. And you know what happens, and I've seen this in Shepherd, when, when finally he knows that I've that he's pleased me. I ain't no dummy. This is true. This is the word of God. It's, it's look what it says. It's wonderful. These next verses in verses 14 through 20 the, tells us the value of God's wisdom. Think about how often we are satisfied with what we know about life and God, and we don't want to uh, get any more. I, look, it says, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof of a fine gold. He said, man, wisdom is better than silver and gold. She's more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire are not compared unto her length of days in her right hand and in her left riches and honor. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them to hold upon her. A tree of life. Does that indicate youthfulness? Did that? Would y'all agree with that? She's a tree of life to those who lay her. Some people can be old as Methuselah and still be youthful in their life. It says, The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding, he hath established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down to doom. Let me read you a few more verses and we're done. Matthew 5 6 is Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's happy. The happy place. You ever been to counseling? They tell you to do things, and you don't do them, and you're not happy, are you? But you ever go to counseling? They tell you to do some things, and you start doing them, and you say, Well, I'm not happy. But when you finish doing them, you're happy. I'll just allude, maybe that's what I was talking about my health. I went to the doctor that one time, blood sugar's high, my blood pressure's high, and the doctor tells you, I don't want to listen to her, I don't want to, you know, who is she, da, da, da. I'm a man, I'll do it. He gives me a bunch of pills, pills make you feel bad, and you finally start, you, you finally start taking heed to the correction. Your body's saying you can't eat. Taking heed to the correction, even the Holy Ghost says, you're the temple. You just you start saying, yes, Lord, okay, you whip me, you whip me. I know I can't, I can't. Okay, I'll do right, I'll do better, I'll do that. And you say, Lord, I need to be wise. And he gives you wise, so don't take that. You need to start doing this. And all of a sudden, you feel a whole much better. Nurse calls you and says, boy, the doctor's so happy with you. you the A1C's down, and that I'm like, <laughs> and I didn't take her drugs, amen. I took God's drugs. It is our sinful choices in life that activates the chasing hand of God, and you know that. You know, when you get whipped, it's because you make bad choices. Uh, but it proves He loves us. When we're willing to be wiser and learn from our mistakes, we finally arrive to a happy place. Psalms 1 once says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. 1 Kings 10 8 says, Happy are thy men. Happy are thy servants which standeth continually before thee and hear thy wisdom. In Psalms 144, 15, it says, Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. If you look back in Proverbs 21, 3, 21, it says, My son, let not them, let not them de depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in them safely and thy foot shall not stumble. Two more verses. Those verses you won't stumble. 
It alludes to this thought. The happiest people you know on earth are people that say, love God, and God's guiding them. God's guiding them, God's correcting them, and God's loving them. Now think about that. If you're doing what God's telling you to do, you can't, it don't matter if a brick, if a building falls on you, you're going to be happy. That's where God wanted me to be. Man, what kind of bad luck is that? that you know, that spider bit your toe? Well, that's where God wanted my big toe to be bit. I saw a big old wolf spider. He's got big around over there. He's dead now. But, but, uh, see, we can't get to that place. Can you accept? You know, I'm going to die. I might die. The chances I'm going to die of a heart attack, cancer, stroke. That's what most people say. But if we live a life, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And you're not prepared for the next life, you're going to be a miserable soul. I want to be a happy, happy, happy in Jesus. And the only place I can get happy in Jesus is I let so okay Lord. Sometimes, as parents, we make the mistake of disciplining our children and never telling them what they really do wrong. As I learned that early on, and I remember I know more so with Shepherd, I would make him tell me what he did wrong, and half the time he didn't know. And a lot of times they don't know. Kids don't, they don't put it together. Can I tell you that God makes this, if you, if you submit to the chastening hand of God, He's going to reveal to you what you don't know. He's not going to, you know when you don't. The moment you did it, if you're one of His. How many of y'all said, dear God, I do you. You're on the altar tonight, amen. So you, you go and you say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sinful. John 13, 17 says, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Proverbs 28, 14, happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. There is a happy place that God has made for you and I. If we would just say, Lord, would you, would you spank, would you beat the devil out of me? Would you beat the hell out of me? Would you beat the wickedness? Would you chase him? And some of our sins are not wicked, corrupt, you know, vile, ungodly, like some heathen on the Most of our sin is pride, laziness. Most of our sin is we think we're okay. Most of our sin is justification of where we're at spiritually and we don't need to grow. Most of our justification is I'm I find somebody that I'm better. Oh, and you always look at them, well, I'm not as bad as they are. And it's not about comparing one to another. It's not wise to compare one to another. You say, Lord, where am I supposed to be? And then last thought. In the happy place is where you're the most productive. All you workers in here that work with your hands, you know what I'm talking about. When you're just sitting around idle, you, you may like that for a little while, but if after a period of time, you, you go nuts. When you get to that place when you're laboring for the Lord, it's a happy service. You get up in the morning, you can see what God, new mercy, you can see, you see possibility because I've responded to the correction. Lord, I ain't going to go there anymore. Lord, I'm tired of being stupid. Hello? I'm tired of being dumber than a brick. I'm tired of fulfilling the thought that I'm a Polak. Amen? I'm tired of that. I want a little wisdom. But I know wisdom takes some piece of crisis. Lord, I pray you help me. Help me get through that door. Help me get through it. And help me get to my happy place. Would you please stand? Your heads bowed and eyes closed. Father, I pray that you'll take the message tonight. And let it lodge deep in all of our hearts to get to our happy place. Lord, that all of us in here would, <coughs> would receive the chasing hand of God, whatever small things we're dealing with or big things, and we would get, get right with you. Lord, I pray we confess our sins. We would have, we would have conviction of our sin. And we have contrition of our sin. I ask you, Holy Ghost, that for wisdom, but I know if, if to get wisdom, I've got to do some things. I've got to be wise in you. Lord, I know you've made an altar for us to go to. And I pray you'd speak to the hearts of your people. If they need to come to this old-fashioned altar, they'd come. And ask for your wisdom, knowing they need to be corrected. 
they'd submit to that correction. And Lord, they'd get that happy place again. Happy in Jesus. Jesus is mine forever. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive us and forgive us and forgive us. But it's more than just that forgiveness, Lord. It's getting that happy place so I can be productive for you. So I can represent you as a happy Christian, not a miserable Christian. And I know, Lord, when I'm miserable, when I'm bitter, it's because I've resisted your chasing. And I don't want anybody to tell me anything new. God, help our people to soften the hearts and minds. Help our young people to turn to the Savior. Help those listening to realize that they've gotten hardened, they've got bitter, they've gotten complacent, they've lost their contrition, they've lost their conviction. They need to get down and ask you for help. Father, help us all, whether part of this church or part of your bride, would get us get this happy place. Help us to be wise so that we can help others get to a happy place. Some have come to the altar. The altar's still open. If you like to sit where you're at, just pray and ask God for some help. We best, we best make sure we pay attention to each other too. Because signs of bitterness and signs of hardness it's, again, it's not trying to point out people and make them feel bad and, and say, well, I'm not where you're at and you're sinning and all. It's about trying to help them get to the back of that happy place. You remember why you remember why you come tonight? And why you're listening, why you're watching? Because it was a day that Jesus took you to that happy place. And that day for me was December 5th, 1993, when I realized I was a sinner. And as a sinner, I was going to die and go to hell. But God revealed to me that there was forgiveness in Jesus Christ. That hand of mercy and love brought me to that place where I realized I was a sinner. I confessed to God that I needed Him. I accepted Him as my personal Savior. And Lord, I asked Him, I know, I said, God, I need to know You. I wanted wisdom. He may not have said those words, but He knew I needed the wisdom. And there He opened the door, if you would, to the, to the door of happiness. I remember all, everything else kind of took a second place. Back seat. The Bible study was important. Prayer. God just wants us to be happy in Jesus. If you forget sometimes... You can remind yourself of buying your young child, or buy a young child an expensive gift. Just go do it randomly. You know, get them a get them a hundred dollar gift, and then monitor how long they play. With. You see, fleshly things they're they're happy for just a little while. And, and us as adults, we don't buy hundred dollar gifts. We buy hundred thousand dollar gifts, fifty thousand dollar gifts, twenty thousand. Ten or five hundred, we, we spend more money. And boy, we love those things. We look at them and rub them. Like, boy, we go, I love that. I love, I love, I love. I'm not talking about things you need. I'm talking about things you just want and you waste and the things that rob you of time. And then after a day or two, a week or two, they're just, they're in the closet. And then people that like to pick houses, you know, those American pickers, they like people like that. Because in 30 years, they come through and they say, man, it's been sitting there for 30 years. I've watched some of these car shows where they see antique cars, 14,000 miles on a car they bought brand new and they stuck in the garage. They thought that would make them happy. That little trinket. But the only thing that's going to make us happy is being close to the Christ. The Father's arms reach out to us. The embrace of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. I know I went to 8 I can't help it. Go home get some popcorn. All right, Keely, that'd be good. Uh, well, I think it's important that uh, uh, that Dallas prays because Dallas is uh, they they re re reestablished that they're gonna stay. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Brother Dallas, would you dismiss us?
God bless you.